Good evening and welcome to the uh, monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Uh, and I ask everybody to stand with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Good evening, everybody, and uh, just for clarification purposes, um, although it's March 1st, this is being considered a February monthly meeting. Um, we made a decision to postpone our meeting from last week because of school vacation. Uh, so this is uh, considered our monthly meeting for the month of February. Introductions. Uh, first of all, on my left, we have our town planner, Jason Bashan, Bob Preston representing the Chamber of Commerce, Mike Hausman representing Dread State Parks, Dean Merrill, representing Commissioner at Large. Ann Marchand, our Secretary. John Nyan, representing the Town of Hampton. Chuck Rage, representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Rick Griffin, representing the Town of Hampton. Bob Ladd, representing the uh, Hampton uh, Beach Village District. And Fran McMahon, representing the Rockingham Planning Commission. Excused tonight for personal reasons is uh, Bill Watson. First of all, we uh, open up for public comment, um, hopefully related to the agenda items. Do we have any public comment? Mr. Jones. Good evening. Thank you for allowing public comment at your meetings. Um, I'm here to talk about, uh, we've got on the warrant, excuse me, have on the agenda tonight, warrant articles related to the master plan, and you also have an appointment with Charlie Preston, who is going to be speaking on E Street, I believe. I believe E Street, although I could be wrong, is the only warrant article related that might be related to the warrant. Is there, that there, uh, true? There's a couple. Is there? Well, for me, E Street is very, very central. Um, and the reason is clear from my mind. E Street, while it's been said as a paper street, of course it's a paper street. That's paper, too. And that paper street is worth Charlie's being conservative when he says a million dollars, because he's comparing it to a piece of property on Ashworth Avenue that sold for $900,000 and after it was fixed up, probably cost about a million bucks. But there's really no comparison. We're talking about an entire street right in the heart of the beach. The town of Hampton has owned that for something like 120 years. There's no reason why we shouldn't keep, continue to own it. If we want to still allow a casino to straddle our street, even though it's a paper street, that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. We'll lease it to him. <coughs> I understand he's been paying taxes as if he owned the land, but that's probably not proper. We shouldn't be assessing him for the land he doesn't own. We should be charging him a lease, probably equivalent to what he is paying in taxes. I'm not looking to generate revenue out of this. But my concern is that we've got a town manager who's sitting there saying, oh, it's just a paper street, it's not worth anything, when in fact it's worth millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And we have a developer who's <laughs> been characterized as a, a, a localized version of Donald Trump, who uh, we're told, well, gee, he didn't know probably that there was this cloud on the deed. And I find that rather incredible to believe. I did some research earlier today in terms of uh, Mr. Lapoli's purchase and his current activities uh, from 2012 to date. And I see that back in uh, May of 2014, the Hampton Union was reporting that, uh, I'll quote the Hampton Union, Lapoli said part of his master plan's discussions with local officials would also revolve on how he can work with local officials to allow him to purchase all of the business, all the businesses that includes the water slide and McDonald's. Why does a person need to talk to local officials to buy private property? 
And what other discussions have been going on we never hear about? We only hear, well, there's been discussions with, quote, local officials, with, quote, the governor, with, quote, state officials. But we don't hear anything about what those discussions are. But one of the things is clear is a $2 million giveaway of a very valuable piece of property for nothing, for absolutely nothing. $2 million plus for nothing. Charlie has plans to, to, to convert that into a uh, public use, uh, some sort of rotary or entranceway or what have you. And that's one way of, of getting uh, value for our property. And I'm not opposed to it. And I'd like to look at more of the details of that particular plan. And voting no on Article 38 is the only way we're going to get any value out of this. If people vote yes on Article 38, we're giving away two plus million dollars worth of property for nothing for, to a developer who, who shares nothing with us. He has got grand plans of taking over McDonald's and another entire block all the way, from, all the way down to C Street. And he's got these master plans he's talking with local officials, and we know nothing about it. And we give him away this one piece of property worth multiple millions of dollars. And just what leverage will we have when we're, quote, unquote, negotiating with his great master plan? We're throwing away any leverage, realistic leverage, that we have as a community. So your master plan is going to be <laughs> since the, the, that particular location, that casino, is basically the heart of the beach, your master plan is likely to, in all practicality, become little more than whatever Lapoli wants for his master plan. And you're going to have to work around it, whether you like it or not, whether you like his plans or not, whether they make sense for this town or not. You're going to have to live with it if you give away the leverage that this E Street represents. So I encourage you to, to, to suggest, as a board, that the community vote no on 38. That's why they encourage everyone in this planet to say no on 38. It's absurd to give away $2 million worth of property for nothing. Sorry to get a little passing on this, but it, it is so absurd to me. It just, it just, it just strikes my conscience quite, quite uh, terribly. So I'll just uh, sum up and say that. I'm looking forward to listening to, as I listen to all of your meetings on Channel 22, by the way, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more on Charlie. Uh, I've got a rationalhampton.com, uh, has all the videos relative to this topic from the various meetings that have taken place. In fact, I made a special web address for that. It's uh, rationalhampton.com slash E Street. You can go directly to that Warren article with all the videos associated with it. And that will include tonight's meeting as well. Okay? So. Please, everyone, let's take a stand. No. <coughs> Vote no on Article 38. Encourage others to do so as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any other public comment? Hearing none, we move to appointments. And our first appointment tonight is uh, Senator Nancy Stiles. Um, I've requested that she come in and, and do a, a legislative update for us uh, and how it pertains to uh, anything that's going on up in Concord. Change to the Hampton Beach area of the Hampton Beach Area Commission uh, Master Plan. Welcome, Senator Stiles. Well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> as far as what's going on up in Concord, uh, I'm not sure that everything up there deals with Hampton Beach, but I will share with you a couple of bills that I think you may have some interest in. And um, as you recall, last year we had Senate Bill, I think it was 213, that looked at. Um, the Meals and Rooms Tax, we've heard from the selectmen many, many, many times about the need to get more money back because Hampton Beach puts forth so much money. I think it's uh, last, in 2014, I think the calculation was $7 million that came, not just out of Hampton Beach, but out of the town of Hampton altogether. But primarily a lot of it came out of Hampton Beach during those three and a half months. Uh, <clears throat> we had a study committee, and uh, the study committee came forward with two bills. One was put forward in the House. That was uh, House Bill 1214. And Senator Panalakis out of Portsmouth was the prime sponsor of that. She's the dean of the House. And that allowed for um, hotels to put forward with the permission of the local community, uh, lo local um, voters, 
to add a, a dollar charge for every hotel room that was rent rented. <coughs> there was a lot of discussion about that, but it went down in a vote of uh, 185 to 119, which is closer than we've had in the past, but that vote went down. Uh, and I put forward a bill, um, Senate Bill 497, which was looking at the overall picture. We've tried, I've tried many different formulas going forward, all kinds of creative uh, pieces to uh, try to get more money back to the communities that actually do a lot of the raising of the funds. And this year, uh, I have to say that uh, on the committee, it was Senator, uh, Senator Clark and myself from the Senate, and then I had three members of the House Ways and Means Committee, the chair, the vice chair, and the minority leader. So that was what I was dealing with from the beginning. And it was actually one of the uh, members of the House committee that made the suggestion that I put forward. And that was to allow the first portion of the meals and rooms tax to go back to communities based on population so no community would lose what they were entitled to based on population. There was a catch-up clause put in there a couple of years back that said that if the state received uh, $5 million or more than they had received in the previous year, that that $5 million would be added to those communities to go back based on population. So we weren't touching any of the communities as far as their population was concerned. But what we did say was the next $5 million, which would have really come out of the state, uh, would go back to those communities based on where it was generated. And we were looking at primarily probably about 58 communities that probably would have received some sort of an extra stipend. And they weren't all in the seacoast. They were in the mountains. They were in the north country. They were all over the state. That bill went down in the Senate on a 13 to 10 vote. So unfortunately, we lost both of them uh, in the legislature this year. I, don't, I, I will tell you that <clears throat> one member of the uh, Senate uh, Ways and Means Committee who has always voted against anything that I have put in to change that formula said to me after I gave about a five-minute uh, explanation of what had happened and why it was important to make that change, he came to me and he said, well, Nancy, maybe it is time that we looked at that formula. And I thought, what do you think we've been doing for our last few years? But anyway, we lost both of those. <clears throat> but I am pleased to tell you that Senate Bill 510, which is a bill that I really put in at the request of Telly Preston. Telly has been after me for a few years to look at this piece of legislation. And I put it in, it passed the Senate on a voice vote. And that is for people who have a uh, state park plate, they will be able to park at the parking meters at the beach between September 15 and June 15 at no charge. Weekdays, right? Weekdays, weekdays and non-holidays. Thank you for correcting that. Weekdays and non-holidays. Also a part of that legislation was something that came out of the um, data collection that they were, that the State Parks was doing at the, at the beach this summer, uh, talking to the residents to find out, you know, how things went for the summer and how they didn't go and what the problems were. And it was suggested there that uh, State Parks consider um, raising the rates on their meters, like on weekends or special holidays, to be to mirror basically what goes on in some of the private um, parking areas. And so they will have to take that request, and I can't imagine that it will be a lot, but I'm, it, they will take that request to the fiscal committee to get approval. So that will be part of their fee package to do that. So that, that does a couple of things. It gives the people who have the state park plates the opportunity to park free from uh, September to um, June. You cannot use it if you are using it for employment. So if you're going to work and you happen to have a state park plate, that's not a good thing. Uh, nor if you own several properties on the beach and a lot of your people have state park plates, that's not a good thing. So those two things would be off of it. It's to invite people to the beach to spend their money in our businesses uh, is what it's for. So that went through the uh, Senate on a voice vote, and I'm optimistic to get it through the House. 
uh, as I was telling Charlie just before the meeting, that uh, I sit on the State Parks Advisory Committee, and the two of us on the, on the uh, advisory committee both um, championed a bill, one in the House and one in the Senate. He sits on the um, Recreation Committee in the House. I sit, well, I sit in different places, but anyway. <laughs> We were able to swap it, so I think we'll be able to get both of the bills passed this year. Um, I will share with you the one that I know that you're so excited about. <laughs> and that is a bill that will be heard next Tuesday, Wednesday, um, March 9th. I don't have the time yet. Uh, it'll be sometime between 9 and 12. Um, I'm looking at what schedules look like, and I will try to either request that it be the very first one or the very last one. Um, and that is the one that I heard had several phone calls on uh, this summer, and that was about the attire at the beach. So it would be awfully nice if uh, people could support that in some fashion. Um, the way I drafted the legislation was to allow communities to pass an ordinance that would direct proper uh, attire for um, bathing, sunbathing, swimming at municipal parks, beaches, pools, and other municipal properties. And I included the word municipal properties because I had several phone calls from people who were concerned about um, some of the attire that was or wasn't worn that were walking on the beach and walking on the sidewalks and walking into areas that they felt maybe it wouldn't be quite as welcome. So um, this would allow the municipality to also uh, do that. It would also allow a municipality to direct where it could happen. So it doesn't say that it can't totally happen. It's up to the local ordinance how that's directed. But you may want to direct some portion of a, a town beach that would say that you know individuals wearing or not wearing an, any attire uh, could swim uh, you know at the beach <laughs> so uh, I tried to when I when I filed this piece of legislation the um, um, gal that filed it for me that drafted it for me said Nancy you know this may be unconstitutional and I said I'm going forward with it anyway. And we will see what happens in the process. Now you know that um, there was a court case um, up in Guilford recently over the same issue. And it was thrown out, or, or the award actually was given to uh, the individuals who chose to, um, chose to display themselves in certain areas. Um, it was given to them because there was no uh, st uh, statute to direct otherwise. And I ran into the Attorney General uh, right after that um, ruling, and I said, well, I guess that means that I really can't be moving forward with my piece of legislation. He said, no, Nancy. The reason it was thrown out was because there was no statute directing otherwise. And somewhere in here I have a copy of his ruling, and his ruling says that, um, yeah, that's it, that's it, thank you. Um, uh, the Judge Carroll disagreed with the argument that topless bathing is a constitutional right. So we'll see how it goes forward, but uh, if I could have someone representing the Beach Commission or the, um, this group or the town or anybody just to come in and speak to the importance of allowing a municipality to put forth an ordinance directing what it would choose for its community. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to walk that fine line between A and B. So I would welcome anyone to come in. I will uh, send a note to John and you can send a note to the rest of the group when I know what that time is. And in case, um, you can always go to the calendar next week. After Thursday of this week, you will see the actual time on the, on the website, state website. <clears throat> Last night, I was watching the Slackman's meeting, and I heard um, Scott Bogle 
uh, indicated that some property had been purchased. I have been holding that until I actually s get that final stamp done. Uh, but uh, I have identified and uh, secured the funding for property for New Hampshire's court to be brought back to Hampton. So uh, that will take place. It's a transfer of property between uh, Department of Transportation and the courts. And it will be at the back of uh, the park and ride, uh, just the other side of 95 is where it will be. That's the money to purchase the property. First time ever the state has paid for property. We got the property paid for. Now in the next uh, capital budget we'll have to put forward the court, the building of the court. But I spoke with the, um, the court, uh, pe people from the court and they have upped our priority to number one so that we should be able to get the money through capital budget next week, next year. <coughs> the 10 year plan. I thought Hampton had two projects in the 10 year plan, but they actually have three. And um, I know that you are thinking about applying for a TIGA grant to help with Ocean Boulevard. Um, so I went before um, the House um, Public Works today and explain to them what I was trying to do, what we needed to do in order to help you have the information that you needed in order to move forward. <coughs> they understand it, but they said to me, Nancy, if you move them up, you got to take it away from somebody else. So um, looking at the uh, numbers, I know it's only a million dollars, but a million dollars from anybody is tough to take away any more than you want a million dollars taken away from you. So DOT has been directed, and I wish the bill were here tonight to uh, really um, speak to this <clears throat> more eloquently than I can. DOT has been charged to bring back an amendment tomorrow to uh, the House Committee to allow some mechanism for if you couldn't get the grant for everything to be moved up. So they're looking at trying to bring forth some sort of an amendment to do that. <coughs> but they encourage me to encourage you to apply for the grant anyway, to go forward with it. Because I, I'm understanding that there's a sizable amount of money out there to be had. Uh, right now there is one project that DOT is supporting, and that's for a bridge that goes across the Connecticut River between uh, one of our western communities in Vermont. And, uh, when I called yesterday, I thought we were also looking at the one down here, but I learned that it was Ocean Boulevard instead, so I said, well, we could always go for two bridges. <laughs> she said, no, Nancy, let's just take one step at a time. <coughs> but the other thing I noticed tonight was that uh, there is money in there. Uh, there has been negotiations going on for a long time over trying to buy the uh, rail, uh, rail, the open rail and they have actually increased the money in this in this section of the 10-year plan to allow for that to happen because I have an idea of what the, the amount of money that's been negotiated is or they're trying to negotiate, and I think this will cover it. So those are, that's what's going on in Concord. Um, questions that you might want to ask me? Nancy, one, one of the things that... Um... Oh, you wanted to ask me also about the town, town warrant. Yeah. I know, article, uh, I know that the, um, they spoke, uh, Senator, uh, Citizen Jones spoke briefly about one of the uh, pieces of legislation. I'm, I wasn't going to focus on that. Uh, as you know, I have been uh, adamant to get the seawall rebuilt in this town for, what, seven years it's taken me to get that done. <clears throat> and so I would fully support that article for the town to finish its town wall, to finish that whole area so that it would be built up. Okay. Any questions from the Senate? <laughs> Bob? <coughs> Mike? No. Dean? Fran? Bob? No. Rick? Um, on the <coughs> courthouse, uh, they were talking about there will still be that, uh, the park and ride will still be there. Yes. And the courthouse, there's plenty of room for. Right. As you, uh, as you drive over, uh, if you look at the, the wooded area that's at the back of the courthouse, there's 2.3 acres there, which is adequate for um, the courthouse. 
and there will be some parking included in that and some parking parking taken from the parking lot. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for all you're doing for us. You're welcome. Nancy, uh, one thing on the on the target grant and um, one of the things that we are going to be talking about tonight on the new business is um, what the process will be in terms of their whole application uh, step by step and and also looking at <coughs> how we're able to move some of that money up from the 10-year plan uh, once we get better understanding of the application um, we might come back to you and to spearhead uh, some type of um, Concord uh, approval okay. uh, in support uh, between the governor uh, DOT uh, and others um, because if we're going to go and, and apply for this grant then I would think that we would also want to do the full court press um, this time around also with regard to how do we get this money out of Washington okay I will tell you that I, I do believe the DOT's um, first priority will be the bridge. Yeah. Um, but I was also told, to, I was with the commissioner today and with Bill Cass today, and I felt very comfortable that they will draft a letter of support and they will do anything that they can to try to figure out some sort of an amendment that uh, uh, Chairman Chandler can work into the 10-year plan before it comes over mm -hmm. to the Senate. Mm -hmm. There's always a second opportunity when it comes if it's not there. But it's usually easier if we work to get things put in and get it passed through the House. It doesn't have to go back and ask for a second approval. So, <clears throat> so that's a better way to do it. Um, and I think what they're looking at, uh, the sense that I got, I mean, they really couldn't tell me what they were planning on trying to bring forward tomorrow, but uh, is if you get the grant, that they would lift everything up. But uh, when I spoke with the commissioner, she said, Nancy, we only have so much money each year, and it's allocated. And if you want to move some uh, something up, something's got to come down. So. Right. Okay. And for the, uh, for the sake of the commissioners, I'll go into some more detail when we get under new business and what that all means and, and, and why uh, the senator is uh, suggesting that we move some money up from the five six million dollars that has now been committed back in uh, 2021 versus now so I'll explain that to you at on the new business they also suggested that if there was any way that um, you had access to uh, finances to cover some of the engineering so that you would be ready for the construction because the tiger money uh, uh, has to be used for construction while we have you, Senator, um, one um, related thing regarding our transportation grant and the revision of the master plan. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, once again, we'll talk about at the, uh, later on in the meeting, but just to kind of give, give you a heads up, maybe you could help us explore what we might need to do in Concord. The way our RSA talks about the, uh, the commission and how we were formed, et cetera, et cetera, we're considered a state commission. And I've gone through our RSA a number of times now, and there's no reference uh, in the RSA that would suggest or allow uh, any type of uh, adoption process for any revisions of the master plan. Now, when the master plan was first created by a bunch of volunteers and private and public officials back in 2000 and uh, 2002, they wrote the, uh, the master plan and submitted it into the Hampton Town Planning for formal adoption from the local level and then sent it to the state for approval. Uh, there was no Beach Commission at that point. Now that there is the Beach Commission that has the responsibility to oversee the recommendations, we might need help um, with once again revising the RSA that would empower the commission to be the um, front runner of, of putting the recommendations and having the uh, master plan adopted as revised. Um, so I might need your help um, when it gets to the point where we finish the, uh, the transportation grant 
and uh, we're ready to go through the formal steps of getting any and all of the recommendations that were made uh, and voted on by this Beach Commission, where do we go from here? Okay, and I will look at if there's uh, another process for you to use as well. Um, where are you in the process of total revision? We're, we're probably still about nine months away from any, quote, formal recommendations um, because one of the things that we have to do is once we do the conceptual recommendation stage. Um, we then have some additional money within our grant to go back and say, okay, here's our conceptual changes that we want to make on Ocean Boulevard, parking, and et cetera, et cetera. Second phase of our grant will then go and do a more of a complete financial cost study saying that, okay, if you now want to do this, it's going to cost X. Uh, and if you then want to do A, B, and C, it's going to cost A, B, and C. So um, I was informed by DOT that once we feel comfortable as a commission after receiving all of the public input on what alternatives uh, we're going to consider for revisions of the master plan, <coughs> then DOT as our project manager will go back and start the second phase, which is the financial analysis. Because we might, for example, select um, alternative A on Ocean Boulevard rather than B, but come to find out that A is going to cost this much when B is going to cost that much. So you still want to do the right thing. Correct, correct. So, so we might need some some concrete help on, on, on stuff like One that. One of the dis uh, discussions I had today was they asked me where you were in the process of that plan because they thought that not much was going to move forward until the plan was completed. Mm -hmm. And I shared with them that my only concern, um, and it has been all along, is doing something to Ocean Boulevard while we're still trying to figure out what we're doing with the bridge mm -hmm. because there's got to be that connection somehow. And I, wanna, I would want to make sure that that is considered, yep. you know, no matter what they decide to do for the bridge, yep. whether it's to leave it alone or to expand it eight lines, eight you know lanes wide. It's got to be able to connect to right. Ocean Boulevard and to um, Ashworth Avenue, right. because my understanding is Ashworth Avenue is going to remain a one-way. That's what I'm understanding. I may be wrong, but um, that was the, that was part of my discussion with them today. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Senator. You're welcome. I'm going well, to go You've had a long it's, day. It's my son's birthday, and they're holding cake and ice cream. Okay. okay. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Our next appointment is uh, Charlie Preston, and I believe he wants to talk to the committee uh, commission regarding E Street. Huh. Good payback. <laughs> I have a I have a copy of minutes that that come from your meetings, and I would be I made copies for everybody if they'd like any. I would pass them on. Um, I want to say thank you very much to Senator Stiles. The license plate thing we've been working on for a while, and I think it's going to happen, and it's a phenomenal thing. I'd like to say that um, four weeks ago today. We lost Charlotte Keith Preston. And her whole life, and probably all of ours, we've had some great families that have operated the casino. The Deneens, the Grand Masons, the Sharkies, the Waterhouses. They've set a high standard for the new majority owner to strive towards. I'm here tonight to ask the HBAC to not support Article 38 next Tuesday, March 8th. For those at home, in my opinion, the passage of 38 would amount to a million dollar plus land giveaway of town land. This commission is in the middle of a $375,000 update of the transportation parking section of the master plan. 
Article 38 is a selectman-sponsored Warren article that would give away town-owned land to the casino properties. When I say one million plus, clues could be used as an example. Our manager, Mr. Welch, says 38 would clean this up, eliminate the problem. We don't need any more streets. Those were comments at deliberative session. On the selectman's meeting on 222, Manager Welch stated it wasn't fair to take land that they had paid taxes on. Well, to that, I would say they derived income on the same land. What was the amount of taxes versus what was the amount of income? He also said businesses on, tan, on town land couldn't operate if this article failed. It seems to me some of them have been operating for anywhere up to 118 years. This is not about taking anyone's land or anyone's business. Personally, I refuse to subscribe to what I think is a fair tactic of the town manager. What this is about is getting all concerned parties to the same table to improve transportation and parking. Improvements for residents, improvements for residents and guests of Hampton Beach. I'd like to share with you minutes of your meetings. These aren't opinions, these are facts. From September of 2012 to January of, of 2015. These minutes don't reflect the frustration that I heard from the HBAC at these meetings. The first mention I see of Sal was on September of 2012, on page 8. Mr. Nyan discussed transportation being a priority as well as business relations with the business community. Getting Sal to the meetings for a sit-down was discussed. On 10:25, I spoke for the first time about the intersection of what I'm calling E Street, Brown Ave, and Ashworth Ave. Just prior to that, there was a meeting on October 9th. Well, excuse me. This was the data was reported in Hampton Patch by Carl Stuker. October 9th, that the new owner of the casino, and you can look this up, just put in Patch, Hampton, Northampton Patch, with the zip code, it'll pop right up. October 9, 2012, the new owner said the casino needs enhancement and not changed. It showed a video of the audience, but this was, you were invited to go to this meeting, and I'm not sure exactly how many people were there. But on the meeting of October 12, I mean October in 2012, October 25th, 2012, page three. Under the chairman's report number two, meeting with Sal Lapone, Lapoli at the casino. Mr. Nyan attended the meeting with Sal, as did Griffin, Mr. Rage, Mr. McMahon. Mr. Nyan likes what, that Lapoli wants things done right. Mr. Lapoli would like the, this commission to have input on his ideas, and he would like to get together with the commission. Mr. Lapoli would also like a meeting with Mr. Nyan and Dredd to, dis, dis, to discuss the state park, the Shell Casino, and services that are offered by Dredd. Mr. Nyan will work on that. Mr. McMahon believes incremental changes will take place. He felt this was a positive meeting. Mr. Rage said the meeting was positive also. Mr. Griffin said he felt many people felt they weren't invited and noted that this meeting was Joyce Graham Mason's idea and she wanted to make sure Sal met many people. Since that meeting, Mr. Griffin has been invited by Mr. Lapoli to go to the next stage, which is one, attend one of the top ten medical companies. He feels Mr. Lopoli will make fabulous things happen for Hampton. Mr. Nyan likes Mr. Lopoli's vision. In November of 2012, page four, under new business. Charlie, let me uh, interrupt for a second. Yes, sir. Um, what, I, what I would ask, rather than reading the minutes of each of the meetings, can you summarize basically what the intent uh, of what you're trying to get at by reading the minutes and and I could do this pretty quick because I'm not going to read that much mr. chairman my, my point is that the the majority owner of the casino has blown this committee off that's that, that that's what I'm saying okay on the new business on page four Sal Lapoli Lapoli companies requesting a meeting mr. Nyan sent a letter on behalf of the Commission mr. Lapoli requested me in the HBAC he will invite him to make a presentation in one of the meetings we're waiting to hear back 
Sal Lupoli Company's requested meeting. He discussed he had, Mr. Nyan discussed he hadn't heard back from Sal Lupoli. Mr. Nyan called his office money and left a message with the executive assistant. He stated HBAC wants to meet with Sal. Spring and summer is approaching fast and we'd like to hear comments from him. He did not receive a call back, but we'll try again next week. Under the next one is February of 2013. There is still no feedback from Mr. Lapoli. I won't read. I'll give you a copy. Anybody wants a copy of these meetings, I'll pass them on to Max. Whatever. Anybody that wants them, I got them for you. February of 2013 again. Mr. Nyan discussed that we had not heard from Sal Lapoli. He's just, he's just receiving voice recordings as of now. He will try to continue to try to contact. He thinks it's important we meet with him. On March of 2013, requested meeting by the HBAC. Mr. Nyan still has not heard back from Lapoli Companies. He put in another request to reschedule. He will work on this. January of 2014, it brings up the intersection that I, that I talked about, and it says here, it's talking again about you, John, and it says there'll be no discussion until we talk to the owner of the casino. I brought up the subject again in April of 14. In August of 2014, update on meeting with Sal Lapoli. Mr. Nyan reported there was some confusion about proposed meeting with Sal Lapoli regarding future expansion and redevelopment. After discussion by the commission members present, it was decided Mr. Lapoli to review his ideas at the September meeting of the full commission. If Mr. Lapoli is unable to attend, the subcommittee will meet. <coughs> Chairman's report, <coughs> October of 2014, Mr. Mr. Sal Lapoli, Mr. Nye reported that Mr. Lapoli has been delayed and will be rescheduled. On November of 2014, Mr. Nye referred to HBAC's topic. He also spoke of a discussion with Mr. Lapoli about the casino parking lot, possibly creating an exit. In November of 2014, meeting requests with Sal Lapoli. Mr. Nyan reported that me the meeting with Mr. Lapoli has been tentatively scheduled for January 22nd. Mr. Nyan sent a letter to Mr. Lapoli inviting the meeting to share his future plans for the continuation of economic development for at the beach. Further to have a conversation with how Lapoli companies, the HBAC, could help each other in finding ways to continue improvements as part of initiatives as part of the master plan. January 2015, meeting with Mr. Lapoli. Mr. Lapoli's office responded to an invitation from Mr. Lapoli to attend an HBAC meeting. However, he is currently looking at options around his property over the next four years, next few years, and will share his vision when the time is appropriate. He will get back to the commission when he is prepared to discuss further options. And I will make this quick, Mr. Chairman. It'll probably take me another two minutes. The frustration of taxpayers at every level, local, state, and federal, is obvious. Just look at national politics. On our local level, I'm accept, upset that upwards of 100000 may have been spent with VHB on two-way traffic plans on Ashworth prior to meeting with police, fire, and public works officials. Passing 38 would be like holding four aces and folding. All due respect, Mr. Chairman, as you have a reputation of getting things done, and I think you do a great job. But like I said, four weeks ago today, we lost a shy Irish girl from the Murdoch Exchange. That shy Irish girl was my mom. If she was chairman of the HBAC and called the majority part of the casino, and they told, and, and, and to ask to speak to the majority part, and they said uh, he's not available, she'd say, I'll hold. If they wouldn't talk to her, she'd knock on your door. If you wouldn't talk to her, she'd knock on your door. If you were too busy to meet her, she'd say, that's all right, I'll wait right here. If someone wasted her time and efforts, good luck to them if they ever needed her, because it would start with a lecture. My mom made mistakes. Someday she probably thought I was her biggest. But she was loyal. There's people, places, and things in our lives. Charlotte's people was Bob Preston. Charlotte's place was Hampton Beach for 84 summers. Her thing was don't respect her people or her place. Disrespect her people or her place. Charlotte, as all knew, was the middle daughter of seven girls of Ray and Annie Keefe of South Lawrence. Let me tell you something. Waterboarding has nothing on the wrath of the seven Keefe sisters if they thought something wasn't right or fair. 
I firmly believe my mother, Charlotte, would say now is not the time for 38 until the time that all parties sit at the table together and work to compromise for the best deal for the town of Hampton, the casino properties, and our visiting guests. Join me in voting no on Article 38 next Tuesday, March 8th. Thank you very much. And if anybody wants copies of these minutes, I'll be glad to provide them. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Any comments? Hearing none, thank you. You can stay around for the rest of the meeting, Charlie, if you want. Next uh, is the uh, review and approval of the minutes of the January meeting. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Hearing no um, revisions, I'll accept a motion to accept our minutes as written for like January 28th. Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Merrill. Any further discussion? All in five, favor? Opposed? Any ex um, Mr. Griffin, you'll be ex uh, abstaining. Abstaining and Mike will be abstaining. Okay. Next is, um, which covers the only thing I really want to talk about in, in my chairman's report is the transportation grant. Um, I have sent you uh, a variety of uh, documents. And uh, before we get to my documents, we did have a meeting, as we had indicated last January, uh, with uh, State Parks. Mike was uh, uh, influential in um, getting us a meeting with uh, folks up at uh, State Parks, and uh, William Rose and Bill Watson and myself, representing the Beach Commission, uh, sat down with Phil Bryce and others, and I'll pass it over to Mike for a quick overview of yep. that meeting. Thanks, John. Here's. So Phil, from the meeting, Phil put together a memo for everybody. I'll just I'll pass around copies, and I'll go through it quickly. As, as John said, uh, Phil, thanks every, for you guys for coming up and briefing Phil and some of our other staff in state parks on the uh, transportation study. Um, and Phil, you know, he thinks this study is certainly an important step in the process down here, and he talked about our parking facilities, the importance of our parking facilities, and what they mean for us, state parks-wise, for revenue. Um, we looked at, we went through, as we did here, we went, we went through all the options, the different uh, alternatives um, with our staff. And, you know, I, I think going through them fills big things with us all the time, talking about safety, improving traffic flow, improvements to parking where we can. So those were, those were some of the things that he, he was looking at, that we were looking at. And, you know, our, I think, as you'll read, again, I won't read it all, but... Uh, you know, the division's very interested in the Ocean Boulevard North alternative um, as a first phase of the transportation vision and, and the concepts. Um, and again, um, you know, it, it goes back to um, accomplishing several key safety circulation issues, safe pedestrian crossing, you know, and all those things that, uh, that we talked about in our meeting. Um, the division also supports the inclusion of bike lanes in all the alternatives, improving crosswalks, sidewalks, streetscapes, uh, you know, in each of the, uh, the areas. We, we touched on the other two scenarios, the Ocean Boulevard South scenario we talked about. We went through that quite a bit and the parking spaces and, you know, what we lose or, or may lose or, or have to change through those. Um, and then all we talked about the Ashworth Avenue scenario really didn't uh, – doesn't really have a direct effect on State Park so much. So um, anyways, Phil, we're well, certainly appreciative of, of the time John and, and Bill and William took to come up and, and go through that, uh, all that, the concepts for the transportation plan for, with us. So we're good. Any questions for Mike? One of the things that um, I know that all of you feel the same as me, um, is trying to make sure that we touch base with every shareholder that has any impact uh, down on the beach, whether or not it's state 
uh, local, uh, private, or public. And that was just another uh, effort um, to get state parks uh, update um, or information on our uh, recommendations up to this point. Um, and so um, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Mike, just pass on our thanks to Phil yes, will. Thank and you. his yep. staff. Yep. Um, and for the record, can you send me an electronic version we'll do so tomorrow. I can yep. then send yep. it off to William? Next is, um, this was something that I know that was important to uh, Commissioner Griffin and also myself and others. Um, they are in the process uh, of doing a, uh, a, a task order revision uh, that would include uh, reviewing transportation needs uh, from um, Ashworth uh, Church Street North uh, up and around the bend over to Winnicott. Um, they have discussed basically uh, what they would like to include now in our project plan. Uh, and it's, it's almost identical to what you, Commissioner, have, have asked them to, to consider. And it, at uh, last I was told last week, Mr. Rose is in his negotiations with uh, VHB in terms of, okay, we all now agree with what we want to accomplish up in that area, which is a lot of it has to do with drainage. Um, and some sidewalking, etc. cetera. Um, and um, so I should know something by next meeting with regard to the final task order and what impact that that had on the original uh, task order that was created um, to do this with BHB. Um, it appears that it won't be uh, a whole lot of money extra from what was already planned for that phase. So I will keep everybody uh, up to date. I also asked Mr. Rose, which I've also sent to you, um, basically after um, almost uh, uh, 13 months, I, I really needed to get an understanding of the project plan. That first plan that he had submitted to the uh, uh, commission uh, 13 months ago, where it spread out in terms of all of the task items, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I forwarded that to you, which gives you almost a breakdown of each task uh, when it was originally scheduled, if it was completed, it was completed on time, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go through all of it. You have that, but we will enter it into uh, the record uh, so that if anybody wants to go to the website and look at where we are um, on the plan, uh, they will be able to uh, easily identify. I think the biggest thing, uh, if you do go to... Um, the uh, last page where it talks about next steps. Uh, I've just mentioned the negotiations for task order two, which is the, uh, the extension. Um, once we get all of the um, recommendations completed, um, we will then have to move towards having maybe probably one more public meeting that would include everybody and everybody to say, Here's exactly what we, uh, what's in front of us, and to get one final uh, um, recommendation, thoughts from both uh, communities, um, state and local, uh, public and private, uh, before it then goes to the commission for final review and recommendations uh, of that step within the, uh, the project plan. Um, I asked William Rose, um, as I had mentioned to Senator Stiles, um, how far out do, does he uh, see this happening? And he really thinks that we're probably um, another mm -hmm. six to nine months away from really narrowing down exactly what we want to cover. Um, he has recommended, um, and this is something that is within scope, that um, if there are other areas that we believe that fall within the transportation scheme of the Hampton Beach Master Plan that has not been discussed, um, then it's now time for us to have that uh, discussion, such as uh, there's been not a whole lot of discussion so far regarding the intermodal plan um, and whether or not we want to keep it as it is in the master plan now where it has just a very two sentence recommendation that um, 
parking needs to be found outside of Hampton Beach, or do we want to extend uh, that statement and, and get more detail, uh, such as an intermodal or whatever? So um, I think we're, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, uh, we are on track, um, and that was really important because uh, from what William and, and also Bill says that Federal Highway um, is a real watchdog on making sure that everybody gets their plans in on time, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I feel very comfortable uh, with the work that DOT and William is, is doing for us right now. The other piece of uh, information that I also shared with you, which is also good news in my opinion, um, is uh, we have been very sensitive uh, because, as you know, um, out of the 375,000, 75,000 is the match, and that we have to maintain a match um, up to the spending as of that date. Um, so that in the first four quarters of our grant, uh, DOT made payments of $98,658 uh, to VHB. Um, that had to then represent um, a match of 19,731. Um, and so far, um, we are actually over that. Uh, we're a plus $1,222. So that we're right on track with our matching as they spend. Um, but we will continue to, to, to monitor that on a, on a quarterly basis. Um, you'll all receive, for example, next uh, meeting, our first quarter this year of time spent by the commissioners and others uh, on the transportation so that we can continue to account for our in-kind contribution. So that's that. And then uh, finally, um, as you have heard me with uh, Senator Stiles, when you look at our RSA, it is very vague. Even the whole HBAC is, is kind of a vague three-page RSA, but nowhere in there does it actually discuss what if during the 50-year plan uh, would there be any revisions that would be required for adoption. So um, I think we need to take a look at that and, and, and um, plan ahead. Um, I don't see us doing this for probably another year but we might as well get in, in motion the mechanism of what we do with the master plan mm -hmm. uh, once we uh, vote on our final recommendations. And um, I know that, as I mentioned, um, when the master plan was first created and approved, it was approved by the planning board because there was no HBAC at that time. Now that there is, uh, how does the planning board come into play? Um, what state agency do we submit in the master plan to? Uh, so some of that will have to be clarified by, uh, I suspect that the um, Attorney General's office will have to review our um, RSA and, and make some uh, draft rec uh, recommendations, et cetera. So I will keep you all uh, up to date on that, but that's just something for us to keep in mind for the future. And that's it for me in uh, my report. Any questions about the transportation grant? John, on that intermodal stuff, in kind stuff, there were four of us at that meeting last night. Can that be included? Yes. 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 So I'll, re I'll record that for this quarter. Um, any other questions, comments? Hearing none. Mike, I suspect that there's been no change in the... Uh, right, in the... Uh Beach Commission account, yeah, no change since last month. The balance remains $11,839.43. So do we get about 20% interest on this money? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. Do I have a motion to accept uh, our financial report for the month of February? Motion made by Michael, second by Rick. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed, thank you. Old business. The subcommittee of the Beach Commission, which represents myself, Bob Preston, and Chuck Rage, went to visit uh, Al Flory, um, who owns the property at 73 Ocean Boulevard. Um, for those that uh, might need to reflect, that is the Bernie's 
um, um, bar and restaurant on Ocean Boulevard. Um, what uh, Al has done was purchased uh, that whole block south of the original Bernie's. Uh, two blocks. Not two not two not blocks. The block. Huh? Not the whole block. Two more lots. Two more lots. I'm sorry. Thank you. Two more lots. Um, and uh, has now gone to zoning and planning with some initial drawings and um, engineering designs of what he would like to do. Um, planning and zoning uh, recommended that they that he come to us and for us to take a quick look and to see if there was anything that we noticed that would be objectionable uh, or any other recommendations that we might have. Um, I will pass this around, um, but uh, since Bob and uh, Chuck uh, were also at that meeting, well, everybody's quickly taking a look at that. Um, he, he's making a, a major plan here to increase um, his uh, venue. Uh, from 400 seats to close to 900 seats. Um, but apparently has taken care of some of the neighbor um, wishes in terms of sound and music, et cetera, et cetera. But, Jack, why don't you... Yeah, one of the big concerns was the hotel next door on um, the Harris Sea Ranch was um, there was a disturbance with the music, the live music every night, and the guests that wanting to go to bed early. Uh, he is looking to put soundproof walls on the sides and in the back, and basically make it kind of an amphitheater where it goes out, as opposed, to, and, and the music and the noise will go toward the center and then go out toward the, the ocean, so it won't disturb the neighbors. So I think that's a, a positive. Um, the front of the Retail stores that were that he's taking over are going <coughs> to continue to be there. It's a um, takeout food and uh, ice cream, and uh, they're going to remodel the front of those stores and make them more appealing. So I think it's a I think it's a win-win. It looks good. Uh, drainage issues seem to be uh, under control, so hopefully that that that'll fly with the neighborhood, and uh, they'll be happy. I think it's good. Bob? Aesthetically, I think it's a nice improvement over what's there. Um, what we're looking at now is very dated with the yawnings and everything. My impression was, though, this is a, a, a medium-term business. He's going to put this deck up and run this business, but he's going to build it in such a way that later, some time down the road, he'd be able to, to build up on top of that and add rooms or you know, expand the business further. But in any case, I think it stretches out the beach. It solves the, the, the music problem, I hope, with uh, um, Mary Lee Hool, and then sends the music uh, across the street, which won't offend anybody. And the music that's going to be there is going to be similar to what he's got now, which is more of a reggae. It's not a rock-type music, uh, which I think is important for you know, the people out in front. Any questions by anybody? What's he shooting for for? <coughs> He's very ambitious that he thinks he can have it for the summer. <coughs> but, um, it would be great. I mean, if he can do it, great. Uh, depends getting through the planning boards or the zoning boards and everybody else. Uh, but he, he uh, he's ambitious, so yep. it's good. He did say that uh, he would love to see it opened by um, sometime in July. Jason, can you give the uh, commission any insight on this I project? Certainly, certainly can. Um, we had a second uh, plan review committee meeting on it um, just uh, February last last week, I believe it was, and um, there's still some additional comments. Uh, the engineer is going to be revising the plans. Um, the site plan was a little bit confusing in how it was characterizing, say, the expansion in terms of being whether it was an enclosed building in the back or just as it turns out, just the concrete wall with the deck and roofing above it so some clarifications with his plans the, some of the drainage issues DPW is going to want to take a look at that along with the town's engineer however despite that he has to get his revisions in by next week the ninth I believe it was his revised plans and if everything looks good he could be before the board the first meeting in April if, if all checks out with, with those uh, revisions that have been requested by staff okay good all right and as customary um, 
when a subcommittee of this commission uh, reviews and approves um, the site changes and has no issues uh, with them, it is customary that this uh, commission submit in a letter uh, to the planning zoning, yep. the planning board. Planning board, yep. Uh, in terms of saying that we have reviewed uh, the site and that we uh, don't have any issues from a commission perspective. Okay. So unless I have any objection, that's what I will plan to do in terms of a formal letter to the planning board. Okay. Next is fundraising ideas. Mr. Preston. <coughs> well, to be honest, I've had a very busy month. We opened up on rentals, and we're off to a good start in that part of the business, so I haven't done a lot of talking on the fundraising. I did meet with... Um, Chuck and Dean prior to this meeting, and that's essentially the committee that uh, will work to get uh, this plan off the ground. So it's a work in progress. Okay. And we'll just keep it on the, uh, the agenda on a monthly basis. Okay. New, bu new business. <coughs> um, as all, you, all of you know that there was a uh, presentation by the RPC last night to the Board of Selectmen on uh, the <coughs> Route 101 one interchange and also the intermodal. Um, I was there, Bob was there, <coughs> Fran was there. Rick, of course, was there as representing the, uh, the Board of Selectmen. So I've asked Fran to sh just to quickly highlight um, <coughs> the uh, presentation. Uh, any thoughts um, and answer any questions that people might have. Basically what the consultant did was they laid out three highway alternatives that they had looked at in their planning process. Um, and, and they had a, a recommendation on, on the highway alternatives. I, I, I try not to get into the real hard details, but I think the, uh, the, uh, one of the major points was that all of that work, uh, the proposed work, can occur within the existing rights of way, which is really important. Um, you know, when you do major highway construction, if you have to acquire property, that, that can be a real difficult and time-consuming process. Um, they looked at all the potential impacts, the environmental impacts, and, and basically all of those can be, can be dealt with, again, within that existing right-of-way. Um, they conceptually try to use as much of the existing roadway and bridges uh, that they could uh, so that tended to minimize the cost. This cost is still going to be very high, but it, it tended to keep those down. I think the, the aspect that this commission is uh, probably more interested in is the intermodal aspect. Um, they looked at being able to accommodate an intermodal center. Um, again, there were three alternatives uh, in terms of what the location of the center w would be. Uh, those all fit very well within the existing interchange. Um, looked at about 400 parking spaces uh, that could be accommodated. Uh, three types of transit service were evaluated. Basically, an inner city service, uh, similar to what you see at Pease and at Exit 57 in Newburyport, that serves uh, the 95 corridor, essentially into Boston and Logan. Um, I'll kind of add a personal one. I think they ought, ought to be looking at 101 as well, uh, serving Manchester and Manchester Airport. Uh, so that's the inner city service. The second service would be um, local bus service. Right now, Coast, which is the op is an operator, serves a lot of the Portsmouth area and the Dover area. Uh, they come as far south as about Ocean Road in Portsmouth, and the the uh, the, the look that the, this consultant looked at would be to extend that service all the way to Seabrook. Uh, I think that the major so shopping areas that now have developed Seabrook through this uh, center, and that's an important aspect, I think, for the town of Hampton itself. Uh, we, we haven't had any public transit service in, oh God, since the train left, I think, uh, or the trolleys. Uh, so it's been a long, long time, and I, I think that would be 
important, both for employment, uh, for people to be able to access employment, shopping, uh, other business activities. And then the third component of that would be um, the beach shuttle um, and, and satellite parking for the beach. Uh, and again, that uh, a center in that interchange could very easily be accommodated. Um, I think that piece is probably most important for us to, to look at and really push and develop uh, and coordinate with the beach businesses um, to make that one really go, uh, go forward. Uh, so I think the commission has a, a major role to play in that. Uh, there were some details that were argued about <coughs> both on the highway side, less so on the transit side. I think there was more enthusiasm uh, I was sensing uh, on the transit side to do, uh, you know, a major transit component there. Um, but the Board of Selectmen finally voted 4-0 uh, to continue the process to, to flesh out the plan and work on the details. Not unlike where we are with our master plan, you know, that we've, we've got some recommendations before us. And we're in that process of, you know, hammering out the final details of what the final plan's going to look like. So, um, you know, I, I was in, encouraged. I think that it's a great opportunity for us, and uh, uh, particularly for the commission on the, uh, on the satellite parking. Um, a, a, afterwards, I was thinking a little bit, and uh, you know, putting on my planning board hat a little bit. Um, you know, we, we, we've been seeing a lot of development at the beach in, in the last two or three years. And often what happens is, as we get development, we're taking parking out of the, out of the beach. That um, We're seeing that what have been vacant lots is temporary parking lots being built on and developed on. And what, what the effect of that is, it, it, it takes parking away. Um, and really, I think, uh, argues uh, for the uh, satellite parking, off-site parking, uh, the need for that. So uh, I'll throw it back to the others. Bob and, and John and Rick were, uh, were there as well. So, Rick, being representing the selectmen, did you have any comments to add? <clears throat> no, it's just like I said last night, this has been going on for so long. Um, and to be truthful, it's, it's not a whole lot different now than it was 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see anyone, you know, the, I, I can't imagine that the Board of Selectmen would not be supportive of it. Okay. Well, I don't know, I, I sensed a fair amount of enthusiasm, you know, when I listened to everybody last night. Um, I, I look at the, the three aspects. Um, I think it's good for the Beach Commission. It does help with our parking, and it makes us more of a, a, a tourist-friendly area. On a different board that we sit on, the Experience Hampton, I think that that helps our, you know, our Route 1 vision in, in how things are going uptown. It's, uh, I think it's a nice enhancement to that, that part of the town. Uh, rather than driving by that big circle of whatever mess we're looking at now, I think it would be much more attractive. Uh, part of the plan was um, to have a lot of parking for uh, going down to the airports or into town. You know, when you drive down Newburyport and you see all those cars there parked there, all lined up, and that lot's at capacity. I'm thinking, well, maybe we could have some of those people parking here. And when you talk to the Newburyport people, they're actually thinking about moving that further down 95, which I think would make this place look a little bit more viable. So. I think all in all, I think if, if we can push that forward a little quicker, uh, I think we'd be well served. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Fran. All right, uh, next is, uh, I, I would probably would put this under housekeeping. Um, I did mention last month that, um, you know, we should have something on publicly regarding our annual elections of offices. Uh, nobody uh, came forward and said that I would like to uh, be chairman, vice chairman, or secretary treasurer. Um, well, that's not quite true, Mr. Chairman. We said we were so happy with the job that you're all doing that we didn't want to make any changes. <laughs> I second that. 
All right, so for the record then, we had a motion by Mr. Preston and second by Mr. Rage to continue on with the uh, offices of the commission. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Staying. <laughs> um, all right, so going through the warrant articles, um, and feel free to jump in, but I came across what I would think there are two warrant articles that have an impact on the Hampton Beach Area Commission, the Hampton Beach, and the Master Plan. Uh, warrant Article 21 is what the Senator talked about, and that is um, for the town to approve an $85,000, I guess you would call it um, professional design, engineering type of plan uh, with regard to the wall. Uh, at North Beach that is owned by the town and not by the state. Uh, that is one uh, warrant article, and then the other warrant article where we heard uh, Mr. Preston and, and public comment tonight is Article 38 with regard to E Street. Let me start with uh, the Seawall Warrant Article 21. Does anybody have any discussion with regard to that article? Can I get a motion from anybody that would be to say that the Beach Commission publicly supports Article 21 and the, uh, the money that the Public Works is looking for to do the I'll engineering? I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Griffin, second by Mr. Mann. Is there any further discussion on that Warren article? Well, I think we're very lucky that Nancy Senator Stiles brought this forward, all her work in the last seven years, I think she said. And if, if this is what it takes to wrap it up, I think that would be nice, but we really ought to thank and congratulate Nancy for the great job she does for all of us. Yep. I think one of the things that, um, and it, it, it was that, um, it's on Facebook, it's um, that page that, something about knowing Hampton, I guess the exact, um, in the know, in the, in the, in the know, know. Um, they they have been really good in in giving um, uh, pros and cons of each of the articles. They they don't take a stand; they just explain very briefly what the article is, um, suggest those that support it and why, and suggest those that oppose it and why. Uh, and one of the things in this particular article, um, they had actual visuals. And when you take a look at the, all of the good work that was done uh, by the state on, on the, uh, the seawall, and then to see this, this piece that's owned by the town that's just completely falling apart, there's a lot of safety hazards there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I think this would be uh, one that, uh, you know, it's, it'll be too late, um, you know, because of the elections next week, but at least for people that might be watching uh, us on TV, um, that we go in support of this particular article. So saying that, all in favor of Article 21 and its passage? Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I think it's important to say, too, that all of the people that live to the north of that, you know, the, all the residents, they're all spending the money on their properties. Mm -hmm. So it's time for the town to <coughs> pony up. Okay. Article 38, the, the East Street warrant article. Is there any discussion? Do I have a motion to either uh, support um, Article 38 or not to support Article 38? <laughs> I, I, I think it needs to be looked at more. I think um, I don't know the legal aspect of, of squatters' rights. Um, if someone's paying taxes on property over the years, they're paying for that property. I don't understand where this has come from. And, and I'm sorry, I should know more about it, but I don't. That, um, that um, it seems to go back a long time. When was the East Street? 118 years. 118 years. A lot has happened in 118 years. You know, I when I bought my property, my property was built before Hampton Beach Improvement Company came into existence. But I, I paid Hampton Beach Improvement 
um, fees every year. And, and, and no one could explain to me and no one could find any information why I was paying that if my property was there before they came into existence. So there's got to be something somewhere. I get calls all the time about in 1907 and 1914 did the village district adopt RSA, blah, 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 RS, and no one can find any of this stuff. So somewhere along the line, there was a handshake made, a deal made. With, so until more can be figured out about this, it, it, it really, uh, it, I really have a hard time for us taking a stand on this particular article either way. So unless you guys can enlighten me on it and tell me more about it, I don't know. Well, one, one of the things, so let, let me reference, because it was referenced by Mr. Preston, the Salopoli situation. We have not heard from Mr. Lopoli in quite a while now uh, with regard to whatever plans he might have. Um, we do have, we know that there are other property owners besides Sal that ha has a, a certain share of that casino block. Um, I have not heard um, from any of them publicly on whether or not this is uh, uh, an impact on them. Um, I, I will say that, um, you know, if this was a major concern uh, of theirs that y you would have thought that we would have heard something, but we didn't. Um, I did uh, make a, a visit to the town manager, um, <coughs> and as uh, Mr. Preston indicated, that you know um, Fred saw this as a housekeeping uh, type of uh, warrant article that needed to be cleaned up, um, and since they did, they did discover it, um, that. Um, something had to be done. And when I said, well, what impact will, if, if you don't give E Street away, uh, what's the impact on the owners of the casino block? And Mr. Welch said that they would uh, not be eligible for any type of permitting, planning, zoning, any changes that would have an impact of where that land is. Uh, where that street is. So if they had to get something, say, right in the middle of the casino, where E Street is, uh, that they needed some type of permit, uh, they would not be able to get a permit because it would be considered town property. That's his take uh, of, of the issue. Um, I am... Um, is that with town council? That's, that, 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 that was town, town council. I mean, that's... That. My, my sense is that anything that Fred is saying on this topic has already been cleared through town council. Um, I don't know, Rick, during the discussions when you, the Board of Selectmen uh, were, were reviewing some of these Warren articles, if they had any opinion one way or the other um, in terms of voting yes or no. Um, but, you know, I'm to be very honest with you, I'm... Um, I'm almost at a point where, unlike Chuck, I think we don't have enough information uh, to uh, vote. Uh, not, I mean, for the for the town to ask the town and the town voters to vote on this, um, and then if if it's unclear, then maybe let it sit for another year until further discussion could take place. Um, rather than, you know, giving that, that street away. Um, I don't know all of the details, um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm real reluctant on, um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna vote next Tuesday on this item. So saying that, the board, uh, the commission does have the, the right to um, not take a stand on this article, um, or you, you could take a stand one way or the other. Um, Rick? I'm almost positive what I'm about to say is, is true, and not that this has anything, it's not exactly the same, but it does give a different perspective. 
Uh, one area where I've seen nothing go, I mean, for 118 years they've been paying the taxes on it. Um, but over there was some land there at, where the galley hatch is where they ended up purchasing it. But they weren't paying the taxes on it, on that land. You know, the, they all through the years that they, they weren't being taxed, that was just town land, no one's paying any taxes on it. And so they were able to buy it, and it was really at, um, it was a deal, basically. You know, that it was under, it, it, it wasn't what the land was appraised at. It was quite a bit different, a small number. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different ways that you could look at it. First of all, I don't, I've wondered, what, but I don't know the answer to it. Um, maybe this is why Mr. Lapoli is not moving forward. Maybe he realized this somewhere along the line. I, maybe he didn't realize it when he bought it. Um, and so maybe that's what's holding him up. Um, I don't know. Um, and the selectmen have never met with Mr. Lapoli either. Um, he has only come, from what I understand, and talked to the town manager and um, department heads, some of the department heads. Um, and uh, the thing, the ultimate thing is if there was a street there, there would never be any tax money being paid. And there's going to obviously be something really big there uh, at some point, and there's going to be a lot of tax revenue for the town. And it's, you know, just like all taxable land and buildings and that, it's like an annuity. They'll be paying it forever for the next hundreds of years. So, uh, I don't think, I believe the selectmen are supporting this. So, okay. Any other commission comments? Charlie, I'll just let you say one thing. I mean, if, if please don't okay. repeat yourself from. Nope. Uh, just a clarification. I, I think Chuck had a good uh, comment. Well, he wasn't sure, but my understanding is from the town manager that adverse possession does not come into this equation because of the fact that you cannot adverse possess municipal land. That's right. So, okay, Fran, Fran's in agreement, that, and I, I can give you a website if you want to see the manager say it. And, and basically, I, I implore you to, to take a stand against this because it's not, this year's not the time. You guys have all worked really hard, and you deserve more respect for the work you do. Thank you very much for your time. And I'm going to, I want to throw one more thing, I'm sorry. Um, so. On property that I know of on the beach, uh, the deeds weren't pretty accurate in the day and someone might have gone three feet onto the town land on, on one side and they, they, they're basically grandfathered in, but if their property burns down, that is, they're known that that is town land, so they have to move their building if that, is, is, that would be the case, right? right? So if they build this monstrosity and uh, something at the casino and it burns down, then you're telling me that there could be a, 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 a road right between the middle of this building. Um, I, I, I don't know how we can, as a board, approve or disapprove this without having a some type of, not just town council, but some type of maybe a state decision on this property. Okay. Bob? I don't think that I would want to take a, a statement either way against this at this point. I think that we've given Charlie the opportunity to express his opinion, and that has get, gotten out to the public through Channel 22. Um, I think over time, you know, Charlie mentioned all the families, the Deneens made substantial, you know, contributions and improvements to the beach. The, uh, well, I'll call it the Shockey uh, group, you know, did it. Um, and then they went and, and sold it again. I mean, there were, there were, was real estate conveyances there that there were errors, errors and emissions insurance that something should have caught it if there was something else. You know, uh, maybe there was a handshake way back when, but that was, it was 100 years ago. So it's, it's hard to say. So maybe, you know, there'll be a discussion, but I don't think it's anything that we're going to be able to solve. I would just have one comment on the value of the property. If, in fact, you can't get permits to improve it, would that not negatively affect the value of that property and ultimately the assessment of the property and the tax revenue from the property? 
I don't know the answer to that, um, but it would sound that there would be some type of impact. Um, you know, the, the other thing too, and, and, and once again, to make this a little bit more complicated, it was this commission um, through um, Charlie's recommendation that we try to explore with Sal about creating a, um, an exit lane um, out of that parking lot right across the street from Brown Ave so that um, people that were parking in the casino block um, could actually exit out of the beach very quickly rather than going up onto Ocean Boulevard or down on Ashworth Ave and up and around. So we created that idea that, gee, there could be an entrance way there. Now, whether or not Sal or whoever might take over the casino block in, in the years to come would ever give that consideration um, on their own, I don't know. Um, if the town actually has the street right there, um, that gives us access to a, a roadway, at least partial, um, of being able to exit out. Uh, on a town road out of that parking lot. Um, so, saying that, if I don't have any motion to either approve or uh, a motion to say yes or no, um, I'll just move on. Okay, next on the agenda, Tiger Grant. The uh, Tiger Grant uh, came out a notice on February 23rd from the Transportation Secretary that they had uh, close to $500 million in Tiger money um, to for people, organizations, towns, cities, states to apply for. Um, I had an extensive discussion with um, Bill Watson, our advisor. Um, he probably knows more about Tiger than all of us put together. Um, and um, he... Uh, he indicated that uh, we uh, should have a really good opportunity to make an application based on our track record um, of getting the grant from Federal Highway. Uh, this is a Tiger grant, same as we got from Federal Highway. Um, and uh, in the way we have been moving with the 10-year uh, the transportation plan, if you recall that first time we put our application in, we weren't in the plan. Now we are, and not only are we in it, but we're in it for some good money. Um, and um, to clarify what Nancy was saying, I said to Bill, I said, Bill, for us to be construction ready, because this is a requirement of this Tiger grant, for us to be construction ready by September of 2019, what do we need to do to make that happen? And he um, summarized, really, for the senator, because she met with the, uh, the House um, Public Works. But basically, right now, we have money in the master plan, the 10-year master plan, the transportation uh, DOT's master plan. We have money. That has been approved, uh, assuming uh, that the House and Senate approve the governor's recommendation, along with the governor's council. Uh, but that money is out a ways. Um, if you recall, there was a um, um, little over $5 million, I think it was $5.7 million, that um, Executive Counselor uh, Sununu put in to the plan. And that money was made up of both engineering design money and construction money. Those monies were to be spent in the plan in 2021 to 2024. Um, that would not help us with this Tiger Grant. What Bill proposed is to take the engineering money out which is about $750,000, and move it up into the transportation timeline for 2017, which is the one that they're reviewing now. With the $275,000 and the $250,000 that we already have for 2018, we then have a million dollars in engineering study money. 
which is the amount required by DOT to get everything completed uh, for construction. So what Nancy was saying is that if she can get an amendment of moving $750,000 up on the 10-year plan uh, for this year, we then have the money that we can then tell Federal Highway that we will have all of the engineering done. Bill Watson said it would be aggressive, but it can be done um, for us to be able to say, yes, we're putting in an application where we can be construction ready in uh, 2019, September of 2019. The overall amount uh, that we're talking about is probably 15 to 17 million dollars uh, to do Ocean Boulevard. From that, let's assume for a minute 17 million dollars, we do have five million dollars that is still in the transportation uh, plan, the 10-year plan. So that would then be somewhat of our, uh, they can't call it a match, but supplement, supplemental money towards the construction. So that means that we would be going to uh, Federal Highway for about $12 million in this grant application to connect with the $5 million that's already been involved, um, and then we'd already have the engineering design money. So saying all of that, um, there is a webinar on how to compete for Tiger Money scheduled, which I have signed up for, scheduled for March 8th. It's a Tuesday. It's a two-hour webinar. Um, and um, it's a, a way to uh, really get a good understanding of the application itself, what's going to be required uh, in terms of documents, attachments, letters of support, any other type of uh, analytical types of uh, re uh, reporting. Um, so before we do anything, I would like uh, a motion by this commission for us to at least go to the step of reviewing uh, the application process in detail um, and to come back um, with a, uh, a final decision in March um, and then in April 29th by 8 o'clock at night the application has to be submitted into Tiger for consideration and if you recall the Tiger grant is reviewed and we would know this summer um, if we would get it um, so um, I'm asking the Commission to uh, have somebody make a motion for us to move forward to the next step of the Tiger grant Bob I think this is critical to the next big step that we could do we're not talking about just doing the boulevard up to the Ashworth we're talking about going up to Boar's Head and around the corner up to Winnicott Road so instead of the center of the beach being in one little area, we're going to stretch the whole place out. I think that will further help us with more big capital investments by other private money. I think it's a, it's a wonderful thing if we can pull it off. Is that a motion? <laughs> I'll second it. Motion made and second. Further discussion? Um, there would be a number of steps that we would need, and I would need help from this commission uh, in the month of April. Uh, once we have the application written, um, a big part of that is um, showing uh, supplemental studies that have been done that reference Ocean Boulevard um, and the need. Uh, there's a couple of scenic byways, I believe, has uh, um, in their uh, recent findings, they talk about Ocean Boulevard. We need to make sure that we include any related studies. Uh, we would need a uh, full force of getting letters of support uh, from not only the local community but from the state and then possibly even our congressmen and senators. So there would be a lot of work to be done in the month of April to make this happen for submission by the 29th. Um, I'm willing to uh, kind of um, project manager, uh, project manage this, this project. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody's on board. So we have a motion made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Um, is there any reason why we didn't um, vote on um, 
uh, warrant article number 42, whether to support it or not support it. I mean, I think that falls within the uh, uh, mission of the Area Commission to support, you know, activities mm -hmm. at the beach. Yep, it's it's uh, it falls within um, the master plan section where it talks about uh, the commission is responsible to look at recommendations on how to continue to improve uh, public events, uh, etc., and also the discussion around extending the season. So that's a very valid point, Rick. Rick if you want to make a motion uh, to support uh, to say no. 42. I'll make that motion. Motion made. Do I have a second to that? Fran? Any further discussion on Warren Article 42? I'd like to comment that we had a meeting earlier today with local sports and, and we discussed many of the positive things that come out of these races, um, which includes help for um, local lodging. I know that fills in some of the motels it, uh, on the shoulder seasons. I've seen some of the restaurants in town where uh, you just could not get in on the night before the races. I, it brings in an awful lot of money into the community and it gives us some, some good publicity and people get to come and see all the good things that are happening here at, uh, in, in the town, both uptown and at the beach. Fun. So for some of the, you know, the, the benefits, I think the benefits far outweigh some of the inconveniences you know, that uh, we would have. We also talked um, it, not only the, the races on the down at the beach, but um, recently at uh, Thanksgiving, the, the Hampton Academy ran a road race to fund stuff at the school so they could do some extra activities. The uh, Winnicott High School um, had a scholarship during that that race, and like I guess said, like two or three hundred runners so on each race, and that brought money, you know, into local using and so forth so it's it's not just a, an ocean boulevard thing it's it's around the town thing and yeah 9 11 uh yep I mean, we can go on and on yeah it's, it's I, quite a few things yeah i would like to say that <clears throat> number one they don't feel that it's a, a, would be a valid it's not something that's probably written right to begin with because it's not it's the uh selectman's you know that they have an rsa saying that they're the ones that are allowed to make these decisions. So it's not like, it's probably not a valid binding Warren article to begin with. But it would be brought up every time someone would come in front of the selectmen. You know, it needs to be decided on. Yeah, I will say that um, they, <clears throat> it's, th the whole conversation about that there were some problems and stuff like that people are paying attention to that and there's a high likelihood that there'll be some discussions whether there should be a, a increased uh, fee structure that could benefit the town um, we've had some people that have sent some information from other areas where they they have similar situations and there could even be a limit on the amount of runners uh, you know so that there isn't too many where there are too many problems. And many towns do have limits, uh, like 1,200 people instead of 2,000 or whatever. And so these are all things that we're going to look at in the future. Okay. I think, you know, that, that might sound good, but if you had something that was going to be a pre-qualifier for the Boston Marathon, I mean, that is so big. And in, in, in so many people would want to attend. I'd hate to be limited by, by a number for, for something that big well I, I from what I understand most of the towns do have a limit so I don't really know but yeah, I think I it's something that they are going to take a look at at some point in the future they'll take a look that you know they realize that there are some there might be some things that could be a little different than they are today but I don't know that for okay. so all in favor of voting no uh, the Commission taking a stand on voting no on Article 42. Opposed? Staying? Okay. Uh, other new business. Um, I, I would like just to go back to um, 
Senator Stiles requests that something be done, be it a letter of support for her Senate Bill 347. She talked about uh, about sunbathers. Um, can I get a motion for us to, um, if we can't attend that public hearing next week, to at least send a letter uh, in support of her Senate Bill 347? Do I have a motion on that? Sure. Thank you. I was just going to let you hang out there for a little bit, John. Thanks. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. Preston, second by uh, Mr. Rage. Any further discussion? I'll write up uh, the letter of support and uh, send it out to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Preston. You're welcome, John. All, all in right. favor? Opposed? Any other new business? Hearing that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Mr. McMahon, uh, Mr. Hausman, second it. All in favor? Aye, aye. Thank you, and thank, thank you, you, Channel 22. <laughs>